Hello, people of the internet. My name is Colton Steiner, and thank you for tuning in to the Siesta Podcast. In today's topics, we have a great lineup set, and honestly, this may be my best show yet because of the topics at hand. First, we have the Ohio State-Clemson game and my predictions on how that will go, what Ohio State needs to do to win and pull the upset. And then secondly, we'll be closing off the show with Cobra Kai Season 3 Thoughts and Predictions. If you do not know, I'm a big fan of the Cobra Kai series. I was a big fan of the original Karate Kid movies. Not a big fan of the third movie, but uh, Karate Kid, the first original movie, and then Karate Kid Part 2. Also a fan of that. So I'm I'm excited to see Cobra, Cobra Kai Season 3 because I've been waiting for this season for a long time. I saw Season 1 and Season 2, I would say about a year and a half, maybe even two years ago, when they like first came out. And it's just such an entertaining show. So starting off, before I dive into that, let's start talk about the Ohio State-Clemson game. This is a revenge game. This is something Ohio State has been wanting to have a chance to fight back and get a get a chance at beating Clemson again after their previous game last year where Ohio State got kind of screwed over with calls but I'm not going to say that they won completely off the refs they the refs did make tremendous and crucial errors in officiating that game but Ohio State did allow Clemson to come back in this game they did not play well in the second half but this is a game where Justin Fields has to step up injury or not he is a big factor to to Ohio State winning this game and he has to be the leader I mean we saw against Northwestern he did not have a great game but fortunate for him Trey Sermon was able to step up and run for 331 yards so that was a major aspect that Ohio State was fortunate come out uh, to come out on top of, but you gotta wonder if that thumb injury is really playing a major role. Fortunately for him, he's been off for a couple weeks, so hopefully he's been able to get uh, some therapy done with that, and it hasn't been as serious as as it was against the Northwestern game. He was able to throw the, the ball more accurately because we saw against Northwestern he really didn't wasn't on his usual self. He threw a lot of balls short. He overthrew a lot of receivers. It wasn't the Justin Fields I've watched all season and the last two years and the last two seasons. Even if he can't throw the ball, Ohio State has to get the run game started early. And Trey Sermon showed what he could do. And I would be, up until that game, I was bashing him a lot. I, I did not trust him as a running back, and I would have liked to see Master Teague more. But after that Northwestern game, the effort, the heart, the ability to get out of tackles numerous times, I was just so impressed with what I saw. And I would love to see us use him a lot more in this game against Clemson. Because if we can get the run game started early, that allow help to the deeper deeper passes that if Justin Fields is able to throw properly, that'll help us win for sure. And most of all, secondary, the defense. We're facing a great Clemson team. I'm, I'm not a Clemson fan, but I got to respect the talent because Trevor Lawrence... Heisman caliber quarterback, right there. You, you gotta, you gotta protect the pass, and the and the Buckeyes have really struggled against that all season. So, if in order to win this game, another thing the Buckeyes have to do, and what Ohio State secondary has to do, is limit the pass, get more pass deflections, don't let receivers get wide open. This is very similar similar to what I've said about the Browns in the past. Their their Ohio State secondary just hasn't really been good in my opinion. And I think that's kind of a fair thing to say. It's I will give them them the benefit of the doubt. Ohio State has only played six games, so it doesn't give them that amount of time to develop properly. Like a lot of teams are saying, oh, Ohio State is fortunate because they only played six games. Well, it doesn't give, for one, it's kind of a disadvantage because it doesn't give your team enough time to develop over the season, the course of 10 games, and see, okay, against a bad team, how, when we're able to see what areas we're good at and what areas we need to work on more. We didn't get that this season. So fortunately, 
we are pretty healthy. That is the only <laughs> the bright side of uh, playing only playing six games, but secondary has to show up, and that kind of starts with creating pressure uh, on the defensive line. Pressure definitely helps the secondary because it eliminates deep passes, and w- we haven't really seen a deep threat this year because our uh, defensive line has been pretty good all season, but I'm very worried going forward about if we cannot create pressure and that allows a secondary just too much time to make mistakes. I mean, when you look at the secondary as a whole, they really haven't created m- many turnovers. They don't have many in- interceptions, and it's definitely of something to look at going into this game against Clemson. A lot of teams are able to light us, light it up against us, so going into this game, I want to create a lot of pressure. In don't let Trevor Lawrence scramble. I mean, if you have to have a QB spy him and take a secondary or a pass rush away, that that I think that's kind of worth it. And while I say create a pass rush, you have to be able to anticipate his ability to scramble because he's a great runner. And you let him up and let him in into the open field, and he can run all you on you all day. So that's something I really want to watch Ohio State do, whether it's a linebacker. Uh, or, or maybe uh, I most likely would like to see a linebacker in that position just watching where what maybe it's tough tough Borland or uh, Peter Warner it's it's one of those things where you got to anticipate Trevor Lawrence's ability to run whether he'll leave the pocket and then just start running because he can run fast and if if he he can run on you all day and that creates bad things for the secondary brings them on up then then that allows deeper passes to happen. It's just not an ideal situation if you let him get out of the pocket and run. So if Justin Fields on the other side of the ball, if he can run, that will also help. But I'm not saying I want him to have like QB designed runs. I I want him to run when he feels the need to. Like say he steps back for a pass, nobody's open right out of the gate, then just run. We we've seen him do that a lot this season. I don't I don't want him to run like 20 times a game, but it helps create a much smoother offense. It allows the run game to develop more, allows the deep passes, and when you have a quarterback that can run, we we've seen this all year. It creates another element that the defense has to prepare for that if against a just a pocket passing quarterback you, they don't have to worry about. So if you have a quarterback that can run, defense, you got to be ready for it. And Trevor Lawrence can run. You got to have a QB spy up in there, and you got to just shut him down and through the through the air. It, it's it's a simple thing to say. I mean, every every game you go into the into the contest and say, okay, all we have to do is shut down the pass, create pressure. Not let let their QB out of the pocket. It's easy things to say, but putting it into effect on the field is a tremendous difference. And I've been a little worried about the Buckeyes defense all year because aside from the fact that we've kind of been able to win games, it hasn't been really blowouts. Our aside from the Michigan State game and maybe even the Nebraska game, our defense has been kind of the liability of every single game this season. So what I really want to watch is how this defense performs against the Trevor Lawrence pass threats and Trevor Lawrence himself. And if Ohio State is able to capitalize on forcing them to punt or getting turnovers, then this team can definitely beat Clemson. I I say this every time. On any given day, any team can beat anybody. In, In order to win this one, you have to win on both sides of the football. So, I'm excited for what this team can accomplish in this game if we can put all the pieces together. And I think Ohio State has a very good ability to win this game. Now, the big question, what is the score and who do I think will win? Well, I got to stick with my Buckeyes. And even if they don't win, I'm going to be pleased no matter what. Because the way this season has gone, it has been an incredibly hard season for these players when when you prepare for a game and only a couple days before you can even play it ends up being canceled and then you have to wait another week to play football it's just a hard season for these players and uh, i'm gonna say it again the big 10 has just failed these athletes because of the inability to lead a conference properly and i'm gonna be proud of my buckeyes win or lose because i'm a die hard ohio state fan no matter what but i'm gonna say the final score is gonna be 35 to 33 now it's gonna be a really close one i think it'll come down to a field goal at the end maybe because of how close these teams can compete but at the end of the day it's you have to 
come out def- strong defensively, can't allow big plays like a 75-yard touchdown passes, can't can't allow first down after first down, can't make stupid pe- mistakes, don't create mindless penalties that put your team at a disadvantage and c- ruins momentum. Because that's the big thing about penalties. No matter how good you are playing, if one penalty can ruin it all. And we saw that kind of last year after Ohio State got called for a roughing the punter penalty. And that just ruined a great defensive stop, allowed Clemson to go down and score. And those are the kind of penalties you have to avoid in games like these and games of this magnitude. So that's what I really hope the Buckeyes can do for one is that you got to get the running game started early. Justin Fields has to be a leader. Secondary, stop playing the lackluster defense you played all season. Have to step up and stop the pass. Create pressure and then don't let Trevor Lawrence scramble. So it's it's a long list because you get in a, against a team like Clemson, you got to be prepared. So let's move on to Cobra Kai season three thoughts and predictions. So this is a big spoiler warning. I'm going to say stuff about the seasons one and two that if you haven't seen seasons one and two, this is your message to stop listening, go watch it. It's on Netflix and then come back and listen to this and let me know if you agree with my thoughts and predictions. So first season was great. Second season was even better. And the development of Johnny Lawrence and having a show from his perspective is just a great concept that works really well. And the aspect of that Johnny is a victim is just a cool thing to play off of. And that's something that's interesting in this show is it shows like, Johnny as a victim and Daniel Lawrence is kind of the bully in this situation. And each, each, each one says, Oh, the other guy's the victim. The other guy's a bully. And that's kind of what the first two seasons were about. The you're, you're rooting for them to get that relationship. But every time a situation arrives that just steers it off the path, it's just hard. You hate to see it because you you can't, you're rooting for them to become friends. And it's, it's a thing that I'm really really hoping that happens in season three, but my favorite character, I think this is a fairly common thing to say is Johnny Lawrence. John, Johnny Lawrence in this show is just his badassery. His mentality towards everything is just fun to fun to watch. And it's, he's a fun character too. And he, he's not a perfect person by any means, but he's just kind of trying to create a living for himself and cr- trying to create a, a life that he's enjoys living. And that's where he finds Miguel and wants to be his sensei. So it's a great thing to watch. And you got moving on from the, my favorite char- character to the best developed character. And that is Hawk. I mean, who else would it be? The Eli Hawk went from a kid who didn't even want to talk to anyone to being the a guy that would beat the living crap out of anyone and, and has the confidence that it, it becomes a problem actually because now his ego is so high that you kind of can't stop stop him from doing anything foolish and he loses friends he lost Dimitri as a friend and it, you hate to see friendships go away like that but when you look look at the character development he went from a guy that didn't even talk to anyone like I said to a guy who is pretty much the leader of Cobra Kai now with Kreese taking over Cobra Kai and Miguel in the hospital being paralyzed. I don't think Miguel's going to come back to Cobra Kai, but now let's move on to the thing. This part of the show is all about, and that's the predictions for Cobra Kai season three. So starting off with my first prediction, I have a total of eight right right here, but the first one is Chosen will help bring Daniel and Johnny together to get creased out of Cobra Kai. I think this is pretty much the easiest one to predict because you see it in the trailers that for one, Chosen seems to be a lot different person than he was in Karate Kid Part 2, and it seems like him and Daniel kind of have a bonding friendship a little bit uh, because of their relationship to Mr. Miyagi, and you see how Chosen has kind of developed into a respectable respectable human being and i'm excited to see what they how he affects the friendship between daniel and johnny because you see in karate kid part two those two were pretty much mortal enemies and went at each other's throats non-stop so if those two can become friends it's one of the brings up the conversation to daniel like 
why can't Johnny and I just hash things out and work together to get Kreese out of Cobra Kai and out of the valley? I mean, it's it's a great concept. And I think the fact that they're bringing Chosen in is a great idea to because with these two fighting, you got to bring in a third party to help stop the conflict between the two. And I, I do believe that Daniel and Johnny will form a new group of karate, whether it be Miyagi Do or Bonsai uh, Bonsai Kai um, or something like that. But they'll have a mix of some of the people from Cobra Kai and uh, Miyagi Do. So I'm excited. I don't know if Ravi, with him being in juvie, I don't know if, if he'll get out by the end of the season. But it's it's exciting. It's an exciting time for Cobra Kai right now because season three, I think, has the potential to be the best season yet. I mean, with the first season being good and the second season being even better, I think the third season will blow us away. But my second prediction is that Miguel will be able to walk by the end of the season. Now, you see it in numerous parts of the trailers that where Johnny is pretty much helping train Miguel to learn how to walk again and, and to get stronger. And it's a cool friendship. Those two have that, that feeling of a sensei and a, a and his Padawan, I should say is just a great, great thing to watch because Johnny with his relationship with crease, it never re- really was healthy. I mean, and now you see what his relationship is. Miguel, it's kind of like, his other son, he he feels the need that he has to watch over him and uh, kind of help him to get on the right path. But I, I do believe this is where Allie comes into play, Allie Mills. And I'm excited because she wasn't in the first season or the second season. And she was the big reason that Daniel and Johnny kind of started fighting in the first place. But uh, I don't I believe she is married, but I don't know if we'll be able to see her husband or not in this season, but I do believe she'll come back. She'll help Miguel recover, maybe even kind of build another friendship with Johnny and form that relationship they lost over the years. So I'm excited to see that. I don't think her and Johnny will end up together. I don't don't think it kind of makes sense after 30 years of not talking to each other, it, it, it kind of just works with them being friends and kind of fixing the damage that was done over the years. But yeah, I think my, th- my second one is Miguel will be able to walk. And, and along with that one is Allie Mills will, will return and you don't see her in any trailer. I think that's kind of the one that they want to, don't want to spoil. They they want to leave something for the people to watch. And that's that's the one reason why I think she'll be back in season three. And now the fourth prediction is Johnny will really try to connect more with his son Robbie. And now that he's in Juvie, I think he'll say he'll kind of be a better father figure now that he's kind of trying to be a better man. And you see that when he's helping Miguel in I do believe he'll tr- work even harder. You saw it a, a little bit at the end of season two with him and Robbie having a better uh, relationship. And, and you've seen the growth between season one where he really didn't have any contact with Robbie. And then season two where he's trying hard to become a better father figure. And then at the end of the season he, with him dropping him off at school, you see it e- even more. And I think he, he'll, that'll continue on in season three. And I b- believe in the trailer, we see crease talking to Robbie. And I don't think that'll go anywhere because I believe Robbie knows he made a mistake. You saw him at the end when he kicked Miguel off the balcony that he knew he made a mistake and he probably wants to work on fixing that. And I think at the end of the day, him and Miguel really want to kind of be friends at the end. They see what happened with Daniel and Johnny and they they have to realize that this isn't the way to go. We got to be mature and got to find ways to hash things out the right way and not do it by fighting. But the next prediction I have is that Miguel and Sam will end up back together. And I think this kind of goes with Daniel's and Johnny's relationship. They're trying to mend things together. And we saw that what happened between Sam and Miguel in the first season, how they kind of broke up on bad terms. And Miguel just misses being with Sam. And and he knows he made mistakes and he wants to... fix things between him and Sam and see if they can have a relationship. And I think they that will happen because, I mean, we saw at the end of season two, Sam was very, very sad to see what happened to Miguel. And I think with him being trained by Johnny and Daniel and Johnny kind of mending, mending things together, I think 
the more that those two hang out, the more Sam and Miguel will hang out. So that's a cool aspect that I'm eager to see. But the next prediction I have is that Cobra Kai will take a more violent and dark turn in season three. And I believe when we see Hawk over someone just beating the living crap out of someone and we see him stand up and there's blood all over his knuckles. I believe that is Kyler. And I think that show no mercy aspect is just going to keep on getting worse. And that's where Daniel and Johnny just know that, okay, we need to stop this. We need to team up, put our differences aside, put our history aside and just work together to get crease out of the Valley and get rid of the violence that has taken over. I mean, it's that one saying that is the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And while I don't believe Daniel and Johnny are true enemies, I think this is a great uh, concept to keep in mind that they're going to work together to get rid of Cobra Kai so we can have a nice karate dojo that is more about self-defense and then standing up for what's right and attacking those who are preying on the innocent. And that's kind of what I think their dojo will be like, uh, the Miyagi-Do. And so that's what I think the next, uh, that prediction will be is I expect a lot more violence from Cobra Kai attacking the Miyagi-Do students and them not backing down because that no mercy has been such a tool that Kreese has used in all of his classes and all of his uh, Cobra Kai dojos. But Johnny and Carmen will have a relationship in the, in this season. And we kind of saw that at the end of season two. And then she kind of broke things off after Miguel got hurt and she didn't want him to have anything to do with him. But I think Miguel says, I want to be with Johnny. Johnny's the only one I trust. He's the one that cares about me the most besides my mom. And I, I, th- I believe Carmen realizes that and she sees the impact that he's made and the impact Miguel has made on Johnny. So I think they will develop more relationship and a more of a romantic relationship, not just a friendship, but that's, that was a minor one that I, a minor prediction I think will happen. And following that, I also believe Yasmin from season one, the, the real, uh, kind of jerk to everyone would actually start dating Dimitri, who is kind of the last person on the planet in season one, you would have expect her to date. But I think Dimitri with the confidence that he has gained, uh, from Miyagi-Do and from his friends in that class, I think he will, I have a little more, bit more confidence to talk to women and talk to Yasmin. I think that'll make an impression on her and they'll just begin dating in there too. But and the last prediction I have is kind of minor, but uh, I believe they'll briefly explain the, how Aisha's uh, family moved out of, after the events of season two. And we see that she was not, the actress was not going to be in season three. And with a person that has been so consistent in the last two seasons, I think it's a fair assumption that they're going to make a uh, kind of a brief mention. Oh, we didn't like what was happening to her. So we're going to move her away, have her go to a different school. And that doesn't mean she won't come back. I believe she'll be back for season four. And yeah, those predictions, man, I, I I am confident in those. I I think a lot of those have a chance of happening, but then again, you never know. You never know. There, there's so much going on in this season and we, we know Daniel LaRusso is going to Okinawa, which is where he'll run into chosen. And, uh, it's, it's so fun to see. And I'm excited to see the Johnny and Daniel team up. That's the, that's the thing everyone's excited for. It's been a thing two years in the making and with Johnny helping Miguel recover, you see that in the trailers. That's just so awesome. And it's so hyped. It makes you, it's like the Rocky, Rocky music. Once you makes you want to run through a brick wall and Johnny has just grown so much in the last two seasons that I think he'll grow even more in this season. And we saw in season two, Johnny doesn't want to make Daniel LaRusso his enemy. He he wants to mend things together and they both do. And I'm, I'm, ex- I'm eager and thrilled to see those two come together. And, uh, they both have great, great personalities, Ralph Macchio and William Zabka, just great actors that fit those roles perfectly. And 
I'm looking forward to seeing the fall of Cobra Kai into a much darker dojo. I mean, not the fall of them from a they'll they'll never exist. I'm excited to see a good villain aspect increase and whether he'll get another uh, sensei uh, along with there. But. Ali Mills chosen and Kumiko all returning this this year is just so cool. Bringing back original characters, I'm always a fan of. And whether it's a, a character that didn't make much of an impact, like Mike Barnes from The Karate Kid Part Three, I I didn't really like him as a villain. And in all honesty, I didn't really like The Karate Kid Part Three. I believe that was forced and just wasn't that great of a movie. But aside from that, I I think he can be a good villain uh, in a TV show like this one. Just being a, a sensei to these kids and having just a bad mentality of ruining the valley. So, and maybe even Terry Silvers from Karate Kid Part 3, who was the sensei to Daniel when he was at Cobra Kai as well. So, thank you guys for listening. And just so you know, you can subscribe and follow this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast, and many other platforms. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. I had fun, a fun time making it, talking about Cobra Kai, talking about Ohio State. Such great topics for me of my interest to talk about and to vent about too because I love venting and dishing out some of the ideas that I have for TV shows and what uh, sports teams can do to win games. So thank you guys for listening and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Bye!